Okay, today we're going to very slowly go through chapter 14, Networks of Gene Regulation. Um, this is where we're going to, if you guys like the LAC operon and GenBio, we're going to be coming right back around to that, along with the tryptophan operon, uh, some DNA repair, and uh, talking about how gene regulatory networks work. It gets pretty complicated. You can ignore the boxes that are listed here. Uh, with the extraneous stuff, we just don't have time to get into it all. And then you can ignore the page where it talks about um, two-channel microarrays and chip. We're not going to get into those. <laughs> all right, let's see how far we get. So overview here of gene regulation in bacteria and eukaryotes, it's pretty simple, okay? Whether or not the sigma factor attaches to the core promoter and then recruits RNA polymerase to drive on down and, and perform transcription. In eukaryotes, we've got a bunch more regulatory sort of sites here, okay? So we have the pre-initiation, which is regulated by whether or not the chromatin is actually open or closed. And then if that is open, then transcription factors combined, and then the transcription factors are really what are regulating uh, the initiation of transcription. Yeah. So this chapter is really about that regulation of gene expression. So we shorten that to just gene regulation. Uh, and then for all organisms, you know, how do the appropriate genes, coding for the appropriate proteins and enzymes, get expressed? at the right time. And then if you're multicellular and you've got a bunch more um, tissues and complexity going on, how do the appropriate genes get expressed in the appropriate tissues at the appropriate time? Okay. So for example, there are a whole bunch of genes that are transcribed in heart muscles. Okay. The MYH6 gene is found in the genome of every cell. You've got all the same DNA throughout your body. It's transcribed in the heart because of specific transcription factors that are expressed in the heart. A lot of other genes are also only expressed there, and some of them rely on the same transcription factors as MYH6, but many don't. So again, how do those appropriate genes get expressed in tissues at the right time? Which is honestly, any one of these is an entire master's thesis or PhD all on its own. <laughs> it gets really complicated really fast, so we'll just try and get the basics down. Okay. Some genes are not really regulated all that much. They're just called like the always on or housekeeping genes or the specific description constitutive transcription where you're just continually producing um, messenger RNA regardless of anything else. So an example of this is ribosomes. Every cell always needs a bajillion ribosomes, so you will just continue to transcribe that. The one exception being with a um, the cell that's before it's a mature red blood cell will slowly cease transcribing all um, proteins except for hemoglobin. I guess that's the one cell that isn't doing much of anything. Anyway, onwards. So prokaryotes, our little buddies, generally regulate gene expression in response to environmental conditions. So E. coli, it's, save, it's energy saving, right? If you're not in a room, you don't leave the lights on. Same idea if you don't have anything in your immediate environment that warrants you having these this particular pathway, turn it off. It's going to save you ATP. Okay, so these responses basically change due to the environment, so there's some sort of trigger, you know, or um, maybe even the compound itself will trigger the start of the pathway to make enzymes that make use of that compound. Okay, and so um, bacteria do have transcription factors, and so they will um, either increase or decrease availability for RNA polymerase to bind. Because again, in prokaryotes whether or not transcription starts is really uh, the big the big um, uh, on off switch okay so because uh, once the mRNA starts getting spooled off of the DNA ribosomes are right there grab on and start transcribing translating it's been a day guys 
So before we get into operands per se, I wanted to go over control, the idea of control. All right, so we have two types, positive and negative. And neg positive control is basically a gene expression only occurs if a regulator molecule directly stimulates RNA production, okay? So uh, on its own, it won't transcribe. So you need an activator, a transcription factor, specifically called an activator, to come in and get it to go out. So this is like your roommate is just kind of depressed and they don't really want to go out and we're going to pretend it's pre-COVID when you could go out and you're like no come on let's go like let's go to this cool like um uh dnd meetup group it'll be fun you'll meet people you're being like a positive influence in getting them to go out and um try something new you're an activator right on your poor little roommate on the other hand negative control uh this is where gene expression occurs unless it's shut off by a regulator molecule so it'll just keep going it's partying like you're watching your roommate you're going you were going out every freaking night i don't know man we might need to just stage a little intervention because i think this is too much okay so the repressor you, you <laughs> is when you're blocking transcription you're saying no 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 no, no. let's slow it down it's a little too much gotta focus on your studies um both are both are examples of you being a good friend just in different ways right so that's positive and negative control. Now we can have things that are called inducible, all right, where you have the repressor uh, that's blocking transcription, but some compound can then be an inducer. And when that compound is there, the repressor will bind to it and pull off of the DNA and allow for transcription to go through. So this is like the initial substrate of a pathway. So something like lactose, when lactose is present, uh, it pulls the repressor off the operon, and now you have transcription of lactose, uh, breaking down enzymes and stuff, utilizing enzymes. Okay. Uh, also, if you have a pathway that um, is made to break something down, you only produce those enzymes if that stuff is breaking down is present. It's much more um, uh, time savvy, energy savvy that way. You guys are getting fever me. I apologize. All right. And so we, on the other hand, we have repressible transcription where there has to be both pieces of the repressor present in order for it to function. So you call it APO repressor and a co-repressor. Um, the APO repressor doesn't have a binding site unless the co-repressor is present and then only then do they um, join together and, and act as a repressor. Um, a lot of this time, this is um, a, like a feedback inhibition loop. Okay, so the co-repressor is the end product of a pathway. This happens in the tryptophan synthesis where tryptophan itself ends up blocking the synthesis of the genes to make more because you only need a little bit. And so as soon as there's enough in the cell to be present, it'll kind of block and, and scoot down the, the um, production of more tryptophan biosynthesis genes. So 